Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, Things Marty Made. Um, in this video I'm going to be creating plans with you to do some very very basic v-carve sign writing um, using the Yeti Smart Bench. Um, stick around and we'll see how we get on. This is going to be the first part of like a bit of a tutorial walkthrough into um, CNC software. Um, I did download a camera capture um, piece of software that would actually show sort of my face as well as what I was recording, but it turns out it was actually paid for. So we're going to go um, into VCar Pro version 11. Um, so what I'm using, you can get the free version for anyone who's interested, a VCar desktop, which is, you know, pretty much the same software what this means so we'll just skip past that so we're going to create a new project and the first thing a project is going to do is it's going to ask us the size of our um, workspace so what i've got here is a piece of stock which is 100 millimeters by uh, 820 so the way my machine orientates is effectively, I want the 100 mil this way. Okay, and then we're gonna go 820 here. That'll give us the length. So you can see we've got a long, thin piece of wood. And the stock I'm playing with today is 18 millimeters. So I wanna set my X, Y dating position down in this bottom corner here. You can, you can see that down here, okay. Now, what that actually translates to in real life is my bed on my CNC I'm going to look at, the timber is going to sit this way, okay? Um, and the writing will be eventually the right way up, the correct way up for where... So where my cursor is now effectively will also be the start point. But how the, um, the Y-axis and the X-axis works on the software is like this. So a little bit frustrating, but you, know, you shouldn't get used to it. So we've populated now our work area. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to play around with some fonts just to do a very simple V carve. And that's what we're going to look at today is just a very simple V carve. So we are going to do uh, no things score party score made. Okay, very very simple. Now, I purchased a graffiti text, but I mean, you know, to be honest, some of these are actually quite nice. Why don't put that? Some of these are quite nice. Okay, so here's effectively what we've got and how it's going to look. And then what we're going to do is we're going to resize it and sort of get it onto this, um, this piece of wood. But for the time being, what we actually want to do is we want to have a look down through the font selection. So as you can see, um, some of the fonts I've downloaded from Google Fonts, completely free of charge. Uh, one or two of them I've paid for. Uh, I think actually, can I just if I press G, take me down to the beginnings of the G's. Okay. There we go, there's the one we want, Graffiti Classic. So that's what I've decided to go for for my logo. So what we're actually going to do next is we're going to look at rotating this. Okay, but the fact that it's coloured in pink means I've got this selected. Okay, If I click away from it, it's in black, means I don't have it selected. So look at 30 degrees rotation. And effectively, that's the way we want to have it orientated. Okay. So VCarve is fantastic product, and we're going to look at this sort of a bit more um, in turn. But we've got things like resizing here. You can see on my cursor there, resizing. This cursor now um, has changed to rotating. Um, if we resize sort of our hair, you'll notice the text grows across the, you know, the Y axis as well as the Z axis. Um, you know, goes all in unison, okay? So what we've got is this size here where we can sort of, you know, effectively drag it up and down to, to get it sort of just how we want it. But I'm not gonna mess around too much with the height of this. 
we're just going to have a look at it. So you can also on my laptop screen use the um, cursor buttons. Move it around. You've got standardly just pressing the button moves it a small amount. You can hold the shift key and press it and it moves a greater amount. Or you can hold the control key. If you notice, it's moving so to get that real sort of fine tune. Now, if we remember down here, this area here where you can see these two lines faintly crossing, this is this is our datum point. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to look at what fits. Okay, so remember my timber is 100 millimeters across, so ideally I want these letters sort of 90 millimeters. So what we can do is we can go in here. So as you notice, the text height already sits at 88. If you look, because of the standard text body being 88, obviously we've got all these different sort of accents on it which tend to enlarge that. So let's go down to something like 60. See, 60 we can see sort of fits quite nicely already. Now there's a number of things what we're going to look at here. So again, that's, that's my total stock size. Okay, so I could hold control and press C and press V and that's copied. You can actually put this on here a couple of times, okay? Uh, but for the time being, we'll just get rid of that and we'll just work off of the one. So we've changed the main text body size is 60 millimeters, okay? Now I'm going to come up to this tool here, which is going to allow me to capture an area that I want to zoom into. And we're going to use this one here, which is a measuring tool. And we're going to measure sort of approximately the total height. So as you see, that's 90.6 roughly. Yeah, obviously I'm trying to visually visualize it across to there. Oh, there we go. So we are at 89.238. Okay, so quite, quite happy with that. I was looking for around about, you know, 90 millimeters, which is going to give me approximately five mil top and bottom. Now, what we're going to attempt is to use this tool here. And if press this one up here, then that would center us along the Y axis and the X axis. But actually, what we want to do is I want to select this and I just want to center it top and bottom across that X axis. So I press that and you can see it's barely moved. So. As you can see, that's centered there, okay, across the whole plane. Now we're going to bring this down here. Now, next thing I'm going to look at is I wish to have 40 millimeter space in between the start of the letters and this. So, the easiest way to do this is to zoom into this section here. I'm going to create a square. I want my square 40 millimeters by millimeters. I'm going to go to create. So there's my square. Now, this square actually has um, rounded corners to allow for a cutter, but I'm not, I'm not too worried about that because all I'm really looking at is to bring this square to here. And just line it up there roughly. And then I'm going to look at this one. I'm going to nudge it down. Hey, press there. This software you can really, really, really zoom in. Okay, so as you notice from back where we were, this looked to be bang on the line. But the more you zoom in, and as you can see, we are pretty much smack on. So come back to here, take my little square. And I'll delete that, get out of the way. As you can see, I've got space here. And the reason I wanted 40 millimeters so I can get some fixings here and here and here and here before I cut it and fix it to the wall. Okay, so as you can see, this is the total length of my timber, and I've got all this lot left. So while I'm here, I may as well have a look at doing a separate one. So I'll get, so I'll just close this off. I'll deselect what I've got here. I'll come back to text. So 
So this is uh, my other channel. And again, not really that happy with this font for that. What I've sort of got previous vinyls and stickers done in the past is something a bit more flowing like this. So we'll just have a little browse through. And do you know what? As well as alphabetical, I wish, um, you know, I wish it could be done so these sort of fonts were all grouped together or some way of searching them, if that makes sense. Because what I very much end up doing is just kind of scrolling through and scrolling through and just sort of double checking and seeing what what looks right we've probably seen that one want something you know quite flowy you know that looks great apart from the underscore looks terrible again what you'll also notice is the um width of the letters yeah so that's quite a chunky letter I quite like that actually it's quite a nice text it's quite a chunky letter that will v carve quite nicely the thinner it is it comes out more like an engraved do you know what i like that so what we're going to do is we're just going to double check there's no spaces around so if you notice over here now you can actually go into that and you can alter all this spacing but you know just for the purpose of the video quite happy with that so again we're going to come back to this one and we're going to rotate this 90 degrees and hey presto, we've got this. So we could do again is generate another square. Now, one thing I like about um, VCarve is it always keeps your last information. So the fact that we wanted a 40 by 40 and we'd already made one, it's there. Okay. To close this off. So you notice I've actually ended up with two squares here. Terrible for that. But it's not necessarily an issue because we can bring this up to here. Okay. Select this text. The text automatically comes grouped together. Okay, so as you can see, got 40 mil, roughly speaking, there. From this edge of the box to the edge of the timber. So that's going to give me 40 and 40. So this one we're going to want to resize to me. So we've got 40 mil here, we've got 40 mil here. But actually, what that's going to end up with is these boxes are going to be wrong. So we're going to change this to 20 mil. Okay, and what I'm also going to do is now that's selected up here because it's in the sort of pinky purple color. Hold Control, it's copy, which is C, and press V, which is paste. I've made a carbon copy of that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down to meet the 40 mil. Okay, I'm going to move this text up then to touch that. So, on this sign, I'll have from this cut line through here, I have 40 mil this side, and then I'll have 20 mil this side. And again, I'm, I'm still very much in the process of playing around with uh, the machine and the software. Hmm? Playing around with the machine and the software, so still not, you know, super duper confident with it. So it's okay to sort of just do something a bit ad hoc and risk it going wrong. Okay, so just moving around with the um, Cursor arrows on the keyboard, roughly sort of space that between to the point of, you know, just for the sake of the video, I'm happy. I'm going to select that, press the delete button, and get rid of all these squares. Okay, so we'll cut this 40 mil back from this edge of the letter. And that'll give us an equal 40 and 40 mil spread on this one. And this one's going to be 20 mil and 20 mil. And I'll just look to uh, sort of screw right tight into the corners. Okay, so that's effectively going to be the V carve. Now, the next stage we're going to look at then is creating our tool paths. So up here in this part of the screen, you've got tool paths. Now, this is actually now going to create what's known as the CAM, which is the computer-aided machining. Okay, so we're going to select 
the cars that we've put in we wish to do. Now just bear with me, I'm just going to plug my uh, laptop in. So we're going to select the V-carve, and what we're going to do is we're going to select this writing. So it's going to be exactly the same. We're going to hold the shift button on the keyboard, and we're going to select this. So if you notice now, we've actually managed to select the multiples. Okay, so I can click away from them, and I can click on one, and that's singular. I can hold shift down, and click on that one. And then from that point, if I press G on the keyboard, You'll notice now when I select these, they're actually grouped together. Okay, so if you ever wanted to pick these up and kind of you know move them around, um, you know move them around on your workpiece, they will actually move together. If you double click on it and you rotate them, they rotate together, and then obviously they would keep their you know size and aspect, but they would also grow and shrink together. But we're just going to select this. I'm going to select the V-carve, so that's already got, just want to double check, yeah, diameter, so I've already got the right cutter. So the cutter we're going to be using today is a 90 degree um, sort of V-carve bit. It's got two flutes, 17 millimeters wide. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at our depth of cut per pass and how fast it spins and our feed rate. So if you notice, when I set this cutter up by accident, I accidentally set it for 750 meters a minute of travel speed. Now, I don't, got to be honest, I don't think the machine would even move 750 meters per minute. It didn't work that out as to what that actually works out to. So we want to change that to millimeters a minute. Okay. And then we're going to change that to something more respectable, like... Um, 650 millimeters a minute okay now my machine my yeti smart bench does have the capacity to change this okay i can up this by 200 uh, sorry by 100 percent um and i can sort of back it off by 100 percent or thereabouts okay so we're going to look at pass depth so each pass would be six millimeters deep Okay, now bearing in mind we've got 18 millimeter stock. So what we're going to look at is what depth they would actually want to cut these layers to. So final pass. So this will do a cleanup final pass and it go back over everything it's been through and it will take off 0 0.034 of a millimeter. So it's an absolute fraction then just to clean that off. Okay, right. So we'll click on that, we're clicking OK. So we're happy with the tool. So with this text, we can actually have it V-carve into the edges and then run kind of a flat bottom with a dedicated depth of how deep we wanted to cut. For the time being, we're going to leave this as no flat depth. And obviously our start depth is 0, 0, 0, 0 0.0 millimetres. So it's going to start from that surface. Um, I'm not worried about using a clearance tool because I've got to be honest, especially this stuff, it'd be too thin and you touch very little in there. So I'm not really worried about a clearance tool. Um, and pretty much we're ready to press calculate. Now, it's not happy with one of our vectors. Wow, in fact, it's not happy with a lot of our vectors. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go and investigate as to what's going on. So you notice that this level here is trying to tell me that it is not happy at all. Right, so we're going to go to node editing mode. Node editing mode will kick the object um, grouping out. So that's bringing up every little node, which is each part of this text. So we're going to click on node edit mode, but by going into that, it should let me open the magic scissors. So if you notice what I did there, I'll go back. What it's not happy with is effectively these vectors crossing over each other some reason really doesn't like the vectors that are crossing over each other so we'll get rid of those excuse me and um, we will go back to um vector validator and again let's come up with 50 intersections 
So there's 50 places where we have got vectors crossing over each other. Okay, so now I've quickly got to go through and eliminate all of those. Okay, so um, at this stage, I've taken the liberty of asking it to um, give us a preview of the V-carve with all the open vectors ignored. Okay, so if we actually look at this, I'm going to reset the preview and all it's managed to capture so far is all this stuff. Okay, that's because of, if we go back to the 2D view and I go into the vector validator, that's highlighted all of these different vectors. So everything that that is encompassing, okay, will automatically be ignored because we've got little things like this. Okay, so if I unselect that, go back to the magic scissors, snip that away. Okay, that's now seen as a, as a nice open vector. Okay, now what it will pick up on really frustratingly is these bits. Now, at the moment, I don't have a proper mouse with a, with a scrolling wheel. So fortunately, I'm left then with the horrible disposition of having to use, you know, two fingers and keep sort of zooming in and zooming out. Whereas a, a proper mouse, I could, you know, scroll the wheel and it would zoom in and out for me. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to search out all of these dicky vectors and get all those looked at. Okay. Okay, so I think I've cleared off all of the dreaded vectors. Now, with this piece of software, um, if I hold the box down with the left um, mouse button and approach from the left-hand side, anything I am effectively completely surrounding with this little blue box will be selected. Okay, so in theory, see, it won't select anything. But if I come from the bottom right, anything I'm touching, so in theory... All of this, we'll select all of it. All I miss was those little dots there. So it's a lot easier to capture a bulk amount. So we're going to go to the vector validator one last time. And as you can see, definitely I'm over here, I'm clicking it. No intersections, no overlaps, no zero length spans. So we are complete. So in theory, I'm going to press G, how to group all those together. I'm going to double click back on the tool, tool path I created. Remember, we're going to try it with no flat depth. So we've got 18 mil effectively of depth of stock. I'm going to go to calculator, calculate. And I'm first going to shout at me and tell me I haven't selected anything. Now what it's done is it is generating all the tool paths. OK, so I can move this stock around and I can have a look at the depth. Now, as you can see, this bottom swoop on this G looks a little bit odd. It looks like it's trying to, instead of actually carve the letter, it looks like it might be trying to carve this center section out. But you can see that there. So let's see if we can um, have a look at that. It's not. Yeah, I mean, this is just a trial version. So it looks to me like it's trying to scoop all this center of this G out. We don't want that, do we? We want this carved effect. Never actually done that before on the previous ones I've done. Um, yeah, it's the same as this, but it might just be the render on the 3D version. But I'll tell you what, what we're doing for a penny and for a pound, we're going to let it cut anyway. All right, so we've got our V carve here. So we've got no profile passes, which would be cutting around the outside because our stock's already there. We could have set up a sort of a, a profile pass and just to cut this side in half, but it's not a problem because I can just run it through the top tool. And the chop is about 1.8 millimeter curve. It's not going to make any real difference on our 40 mil and 20 mil offsets. OK, so you've got pockets there for cutting sort of internals. You've got profiles for cutting around the edges. But all we're interested in is just this one B carve. And in theory, that should fill out this whole sun. So we're going gonna to just calculate all our tool paths. We're going to open this up. That's going to tell me it's going to take 22 minutes to carve. Now, I've got to be honest, that seems like a lot of time to carve this. First thing I want to do is I want to double check. I set that to 18 mil. Yeah, and it's not shouting at me to tell me that it's going to cut all the way through the stock. So it should be all right. The only thing I'm just going to check is, obviously, is this. So we've got 650 millimeters a minute. Plunge ray, final depth step over, pass ray, cut. Still saying it's going to take 22 minutes. Okay, we'll, we'll see. So we'll come back here 
and I'm going to save. So I've already automatically got the Yeti Smart Bench imprinted into this program. Sorry, I thought I'd just switch it on. So I've already got this imprinted into this program. Okay. Um, so while the Yeti Smart Bench loads up, which does take a while, we're going to go ahead and save this toolpath. Now we've got our toolpath selected down here. If you have multiple toolpaths for doing multiple things all across your workpiece, every time you change a tool, you'll want to basically deselect any other tool and only select those tools, you know, those passes that are going to create those tools. Okay, which you can do that between these options here and obviously all your toolpaths, which will do more complex projects. You get to see that. So we're going to save toolpath. Automatically, that's going to take me into my G code file. So I'm just going to put um, YT sign project. Okay. So now it's a YouTube sign project. So obviously, that's what I'm making this video for is YouTube tutorial. So I'll press save. So at this point here, I'm going to come down there and I'll open file transfer. And possibly Smart Bench is just setting itself up um, automatically in the background. There we go. Let's find my Smart Bench. So now we're going to go off and find that G code file that we've just created. So you may be able to hear a bit of inf like audio interference in the background. So YT Sign Project. Okay, that's what we've just created here. So I think there's the box we want. Okay, so effectively what we do is we drag and drop that and that's transferring that file now across to the smart bench. So we'll flick over now onto the GoPro. Okay, and then we'll get to see the actual machine set up and the machine sort of cut its passes. Um, cancel that a minute. Right, we'll see you in a minute over on the GoPro. Hi, so welcome over to the actual smart bench itself. So obviously we've set up the software now. So now we're gonna look onto the smart bench and we'll see that it's come across to the machine. Okay, so I'll just bring you across to here. Now on the smart bench itself, I'm gonna go into this screen. So from the main menu, I'm gonna go into the CAD and CAM screen, okay. So we're going to have a look at setting all the machine up in a, just now. Um, we're going to have a look at where our workpiece ends up on the machine. Okay, now it's quite important that we set up this machine first because in here is all of our files. Obviously, once we've selected that file, once we've selected that file, it's going to be pretty much ready to rock and roll. So I'll move you over here. You'll get to see this come into play now. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. On this piece of software, you'll notice that the piece of wood is actually going this way. That is to set up to make it actually look this way and our right will be the right way, you know, the correct way up. Okay, so from here, I'm hoping you can see that there is um, sort of laser crosshairs on the machine. Okay, so what I do now is I basically get this set up to reference. Now, from here, I'm able to ask it to move um, infinity. I'm not sure what that option is, but I can ask it to press once and it will move 10 millimeters at a time, one millimeter or 100 thou. Now, the laser, just bring this round to here so you can see it better. So as you can see, the laser is pretty much right to this axis. And I'm going to bring it down, so I'm moving a millimetre at a time. We're not far off there, actually. So I'll move it to 100,000. Okay. 
now I'm happy that it's referenced this very bottom corner which is what I said to you it would I'm gonna press the set X and Y datum and that is moved basically into that position perfectly for us okay so now the center of this cutter is over the center of that corner but I've actually got the incorrect spindle in this motor okay so I've got the incorrect cutter so what we're going to do is we're going to swap over okay so this is the cutter we're going to be using okay so as I said it was a 90 millimeter uh, sorry 90 degree angle and this one is fantastic because it's actually got replaceable wings as you can see you can unscrew that cutter uh, basically it goes into the spindle like so so I've got the K datum there for the for the depth okay so I set that up to the top of the collet nip it up your fingers and then nip it up the spanner supplied okay nice and simple now it was very lucky that when I purchased the machine I was actually able to purchase a separate spindle so the tool changing is a hell of a lot easier than the fact that I can swap over motors and I can work on one motor so firstly we unscrew the communication cable off the top take out the power cable and unfix the whole entire machine okay rotating so the red button faces forward and that's an eight millimeter cut cutter I've been using for profile cutting we'll pop that there for a second we're going to take this whole entire spindle very careful not to damage anything okay and we're going to set that in there nip up the body plug the power cable in very important to get this seated correctly okay is the communication cable without this this won't tell the machine to power on okay so it start trying to cut but the cutter itself won't rotate at all and I've had that and it's not fun so what we're going to do now is we're going to move across to um, we're going to move across to set the Z height which is Z height is the height of the cutter so it knows where the X and Y datum is which is the bottom corner of our material and then what we're going to do is we're going to pull out the dust shoe now Yeti Smart Bench is fantastic that it actually comes with what you call a touch off plate pretty much built into the machine look and it's even branded as well how fantastic is that so I don't know how well you can see from there it's not easy but again what you do is you run the touch off plate into the bottom we're going to bring the cutter down so it's fairly close again I can adjust the cutter by one millimeter increments 10 millimeter I'm going to bring it so it's close we're going to press the Z the Z zero and that brings this cutter down you can just see the cogs move in there brings the cutter down very slowly until it touches that plate you get a little flash of green to tell you that it's happy now at this stage we've set the machine it knows where the X and Y datum is it knows where the Z datum is which is the surface of our workpiece okay so now we go into and we're going to select our file okay so we're going to select our file over here now we were looking for YT something something okay uh, YT sign G code so you selected it there YT sign project G code so it's now preparing that so it's saying the job's loaded now we're just going to check it for the smart bench to look for any errors okay and you can see that it's just loading away in the background taking a while for such a small file but never mind there we go so it's all finished it's quite happy so we've got a play button here so if the job pauses would you like smart bench to automatically lift the z-axis so I if I pause this operation halfway through it will lift this up to approximately where it is and just get it out of the way I always press yes takes you through um, some safety information and then effectively this is where we've got our feed rate we can adjust up and down during the job and we've got our spindle speed we can also adjust that up and down during the job now when I press go 
this effectively will come back to our datum for our y and x axis and then it will start to bring the cutter down and you'll see the rest okay so we've pressed play also as well you get um, a percentage of how far through the job so look, it gives you a run time and it gives you a percentage <laughs> Okay, so I don't know how well you can see it in there, but effectively we are just missing some of the detail of this text, okay? So some of that is because the spindle was riding on pretty much its maximum due to the height off of the bed, okay? I was cutting some thicker material. And secondly, it's probably due to some of the, um, the datum setting. So we're gonna fine tweak that by dropping this whole bed down for starters, okay, so I've got a bit more height on the, um, the spindle adjustment, and then I'm gonna retweak and I'm gonna manually set the Z axis just literally a fraction lower, so it will just finish off the rest of that detail. So just bear with me, and we'll come back once the machine's reset. Okay, so what I'm doing is um, across these rails, I've got some of the guide wheels, and I've got a piece of 18 mil um, down here, and a piece of six mil on top of that, and exactly the same on the other side of the bed. So, when I set the height of this, okay, when I reset the height of this, it's going to effectively be six millimeters above our work surface, okay? So, because it's only a small piece, I don't want the guide wheels sort of running across and crashing into everything. The reason it's flashing red is because I've hit one of the bump stops. So obviously we've upset it a little bit. And then I want these wheels I want these wheels just touching this surface and then I'm gonna lock it off. Okay? So I'm not worried about the red flashing. These have got crash bars built into it. So I've engaged and bumped one of the crash bars so it's just telling me that it's not happy and it's asking me if it's okay to, to sort of proceed. So again, just gonna check this. That's quite tight on there. I'm just gonna bring this up just a fraction. Too much. Beautiful. So we'll lock this off. And we're going to cancel this job. Okay. So again, the machine still knows the X and Y datum. It's just this Z axis we're going to look at. So instead of using the touch off plate, because I want to sort of move into that a little bit more, we're actually going to set it manually, looking at the cutter into the depth of this groove. So we'll go back to here. I want to have a look at some of this deeper pattern here. So it's not often I actually have to set this Z axis manually. But again, I have done it before where I've accidentally brought it down sort of um, 10 millimeters at a time instead of one millimeter and it's crashed into everything there we go right 
So what I've done is I've just set that V cutter. Let me bring you across so you can see it. Just set that V cutter. I don't know well you can see it with all these lights on. Just fractionally into the lettering that we've already started to cut. Okay. By probably half a millimetre. I'm going to come across to here and I believe it's this one that's now reset that Z that height axis okay so it's flashed what you couldn't see off camera is it flashed green to say it accepted the change so in theory now I can go back in we've got this um, YT sign project already up on the screen the machine's green light, green lit, which it's saying it's happy. It's asking me again, do I want to lift it? I understand. And we're going to press go. Now, in theory, that's going to run again, totally from the beginning. Okay. And it might not necessarily take the same path. Okay. It's very strange how this works itself out. So again, we're at 0%. We're at 750 millimeters a minute feed rate. And the RPM, 24 pounds. so there you have it so that's effectively finished that job now what it does it resets itself back to the um, X and Y datum over here so what we'll do is we will hone the machine the light turns am amber to say that it's uh, sort of thinking and it go and put itself away now very clever eh? very good right so this is our finished product so let me bring you over here Okay, so there's my cam clamps, clamp that all down. Now this is a light grey um, vinyl wrapped MDF for kitchen cabinet making. You can see we just missed a tiny bit on the Y there as it swoops up and swoops back down. You know, this is far more of an engraving sort of pass. We missed a tiny bit on the S as well. And it's because of that 90 degree. So let me show you as a comparison. This is the next angle down, which is a 60 degree, and they also do a 45 as well, which I don't own a 45 yet. But as you can see, that 60 degree is a lot more a finer of a point. So, you know, in reflection, you know, it's all, it's all a learning at this stage. Maybe the 60 degree would have been better. So, as you can see, it's came out quite nice. Now, this. Um, vinyl wrapped MDF is actually wrapped then in a in a sort of a see-through protection you can see probably bubbles and blisters in the see-through protection now we're gonna leave that protection on I'm gonna spray this black now and the hope is it too much of the you know not too much of the paint then bleeds into this under this vinyl 
So when we peel it all off then, the writing will be nice and clean. So I'm gonna take this outside um, and I'm gonna get it sprayed up and then we'll bring it back in when it's dry, we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so I sprayed all this up. Um, this place is still tacky, but the main of it is the paint is basically seeped into um, the MDF. We're gonna start peeling this vinyl off and then having a look. It's the first time I've done this, so I don't know how much the paint may have bled underneath the um, the protection, but we're gonna to start to peel it off and have a look. Now bearing in mind, like I said, the uh, black spray paint on the surface is still sort of very wet, but it shouldn't necessarily affect what we want, which is the effect inside the lettering. Now with it being a basic, you know, this is standard MDF. This is not moisture resistant in any way. Um, the layer of paint that we've put on will very quickly seep into the surface and be sucked in. So it gives quite, quite a nice matte finish if I'm being honest, but if you wanted it to be that real nice high gloss black that you see on the surface, then you'd need to apply sort of more and more coats. Look, you can see where we had a break in the, the protection there. Apart from that, we're gonna try and clean that off of the surface if we can. And you'll see where I'm pulling it off, it's kind of having a tendency um, to sort of peel the paint a little bit. But with a bit of luck, might be able to just wipe some of that off the surface. But I'm gonna have to be, you know, move pretty quick because I don't want it drying. Okay, so here's my V-carve sign, cut into some light grey vinyl wrap MDF, and there's both sides. So in reflection, stop being so lazy, let the paint dry, like you say, patience is a virtue. But just as a, an example, look, you can see you've got some nice shine there on the actual sign itself, um, and then the uh, the writing itself comes into like a nice matte finish. So the more layers of paint you build up, um, you could even try to look to spray or coat this with some sort of sealer first to stop the MDF soaking in so much. But you can see there where it's just kind of clipping the edge of the vinyl. That probably need more paint laid into it. But, you know, just as a sort of an example of what Smartbench can do and sort of how efficient it is and how quick and easy it can be to make plans. You know, providing the uh, the vectors will want to validate properly anyway. Yeah, what do you think, eh? Drop us some comments, let us know, let us know what you think. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. Everyone take care. So thank you very much for joining me for the first sort of walkthrough and tutorial of um, CNC routering with the Yeti Smart Bench. Um, I hope to do more videos sort of coming up, so Keep an eye on the channel, you never know. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.